You know, this is starting to get mildly annoying. And the reason why it is, is because this really shouldn't be a conversation that I should be having with you guys because this should be a common sense thing. The Dallas Cowboys, their starting quarterback is out. They have a backup that will remain in until the starter comes back. And then once the starter is ready to go, they will continue with the starter. This has happened before. Okay, 2019, Drew Brees has a similar injury to what Dak Prescott had. And he was out for around six-ish games. But in that span of time, Teddy Bridgewater led the Saints to a 5-0 and record under the helm and they didn't have any second thoughts on oh should we put teddy back in no you put the guy that's going to put your team in the best position to win and that is the case here in dallas you can go back to uh the 2016 patriots where they went 14 and 2 they started off the season 3 and 1 with two different backup quarterbacks and they held the things up right now. You can argue that Jimmy Garoppolo is a solid starter. And same with uh, Jacoby Brissett. I personally think that they're like base level guys at the best. But like, you know, I, I don't really look at Jacoby Brissett as a starting quarterback. I think he's a backup. I think that Jimmy Garoppolo is kind of like this. He's going to, he's like the bare minimum of what you would want from a game, man game manager slash starter. I don't know, I just think it's kind of stupid that we're having this conversation again, because we know that when you reinsert that uh, Dak Prescott into this lineup, you're getting better quarterback play to come along with it. Now, will it be like that day one? Probably not. But here's a couple things that I think a lot of people don't realize, and some things that I know. The play calling is a lot different. And just recently, in a press conference, Kellen Moore said every single fiber in his body that he has wanted to throw the football a lot more on Sunday. And he didn't. He held his nose and he was like, you know what, I'm going to run the ball, I'm going to do this. But that's a problem. Because if you get Dak Prescott back and you go back to the pass-happy stuff, or not that it has to be pass-happy, I more so mean you're getting away from what's working and is being efficient, then we got a problem. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand is that you have an offensive coordinator that is legit putting it out in front of you. Hey, I want to pass the ball a whole lot. And it's kind of like because of the fact that I don't have my quarterback in there, I am forced to run the ball, which should not be the case. I don't care if it's Dak. I don't care if it's Cooper Rush. I don't care who it is. You shouldn't be throwing the ball for the sake of throwing the ball. You should be doing with what's working and then doing it schematically to where it works. And that's where I think the problem lies in with our situation here is because, you know, I guarantee you that there will be a situation where once Dak Prescott is reinserted into the starting lineup, people will throw a bitch fit and they will say that, oh, we need to go back to Cooper Rush or and you start this whole nonsense again. You know, um, I think one thing, too, is, is that we got to realize that the Cowboys offense has not been the greatest at scoring points. Even with Cooper Rush, they have scored on average about 20-ish points a game. You know, and their defense has averaged about 15 points a game. So when you look at the math and you say to yourself, okay, well, by default, you're winning because your defense is holding these opponents to, you know, minimal scores so that you don't have to worry about scoring as much on offense. Of course, you're going to lead yourself to more victories. In fact... You know, um, there's a nitpickiness that comes with certain players, and I understand that, you know, some people love to use the idea that, hey, Dak makes all this money, well, why is it that, um, you know, we can't criticize him or, like, some nonsense. Like, listen, the fact is is that you got to look at what's on the field, and, you you know, if you want to analyze it, that's up to you. But the thing is is when you're looking at Cooper Rush and you're trying to make a determination of, oh, is this guy actually a starter? The, f the problem is, is you look at some of these games. Now, the Giants game was his best game. But you look at the previous two, the two other two games, not the previous two, but the other two games. And it was like, you had a the Bengals game where he started off really well. And then he played relatively pedestrian. He almost threw, I think, like four picks or something like that in that game. Like, I counted four. I could be wrong, but I did count four. Then you go to the... 
Washington game, and the Washington game, statistically speaking, was not his best game, even though he's thrown two touchdowns, but the problem is, is that you had two interceptions that were negated by penalty, and both of which would have been key for possibly turning the tide of the game. So, I don't think people, what I don't think is right is that people will nitpick that, but won't nitpick that, like, what are we doing here? And I'm not trying to sit here and say we got a lambast freaking Cooper Rush for the sake of that. No, my problem is, is that it's evident that you need a better signal caller to get farther than what you would want to go. And I've gone on the record. I have said I do not care with what the record happens to be in the regular season. Whatever happens in the postseason is whatever happens. But I can tell you that the best way for the Cowboys to win is if they just ride the wave. Once Dak Prescott is fully healthy, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand, is that you know Dak himself can be his own worst enemy because he wants to play. Of course, you know he is everything football. Like some, you know, most of these people that are in the NFL, they want to play at you know whether they're fully healthy or not. And that's something I can commend this coaching staff about, is that they are willing to say, no, you need to get a full week of practice before we can make a determination on whether or not you want to play. If you can't practice at least once, then that's a problem. And I, I like that, because what we're doing is we're setting up accountability so that, number one, we're not rushing players back into the lineup. And number two, as you win games, you can then explain, hey, we are doing fine you rest, and then when you're ready, we will bring you back. And I think that's something a lot of people don't realize, is that that luxury of being able to just sit there and say to yourself, you know what, Dak, you know, we're 3-1. and one. As we win games, it gives you more time to come back. So if you think about it, if you win this next game versus the Rams, you get another week for your guys to heal up. So now you're having J-Rod Kirk, and not even just Dak. You're having all these other guys get healed up, and then your team's going to get better. And as your team gets better, then you will start having different conversations as the season goes on. Now, for me, I don't care what those conversations are, but all I can say is, is like, this is the dumbest conversation I've ever seen because these are the same people. That want to point out that Dak sucks, Kellen Moore's trash, the wide receivers are overrated, the tight ends trash, everything's terrible, but like, then it's, oh, well, he's getting this money and he's getting, like, what are we doing here? Because it can't be one thing and then everything else is true, because if it's like, okay, everybody sucks, then why don't we, then what's the option to replace all of them, or oh, this one guy in particular sucks more than everybody else, but, like, you're saying everybody else sucks, so doesn't that make the situation worse? I don't know. I think it's a dumb conversation to have, and I think that anybody that legitimately thinks that, um, you know, God bless you, you know, that's your opinion, but I think that it's dumb, you know, and that's just me. I think that the only controversy that's here is that you know, the pressure is a privilege thing. You know, yes, Dak Prescott with the media spotlight will have a lot of pressure to come back and perform at a high level. Now, me being as logical as possible, do I expect him to throw five touchdowns the first game he's back? Hell no, I don't. I think that he will need some time to get into a mid-season form, to get into a rhythm, and I think that that's something that the Cowboys learned from, or rather, this coaching staff learned from last year. Oh, Dak can play, let's go play him, but he wasn't ready to go. And so that's where I kind of get frustrated with this front office, because it feels as if these guys are just, you know, they're just trying to make sure that they're keeping asses in the stands, which... Hello, that's one of the biggest things I've talked about. But, you know, this team has a certain grit and grind to it that I really do appreciate. And I think that's something that you got to commend Mike McCarthy on, which I'm going to touch up on another video. But I really do like what I'm seeing with what we've been doing offensively enough to get the job done, but we can do better. And I think that Dak Prescott's going to make you a better team offensively. I think that as you're getting these weapons back and as they're getting acclimated, when Dak Prescott gets reinserted, I think he won't be as uh, hesitant because in that first game, and a lot of people want to use that as ammunition to try and say that Dak sucks, but 
you got to go back and watch that game. The play calling was atrocious. We got away with what was working. Your offensive line was shaky. Your quarterback was concerned about the, um, you know, you saw it in his throws. It was like, dude, I don't know if I have enough time to throw the ball. So there was a lot going on. And I've seen a lot of week one games where they've gone wrong. But, you know, th this is where I got to commend Mike McCarthy. He's flipped the script. I'm shocked that we still are where we're at with a 3-1 and one record, regardless of what happens in these next couple weeks. I think that he's done a great job of keeping the Cowboys afloat because in years past, you would say that that was a death sentence. And I think that this is something that, again, going back to Mike McCarthy, I think this is a coaching staff now that is like, listen, you need to be able to do this in order to play rather than the old school Jason Garrett was like, oh, what's that? You say you're good. All right, you're going to play, which is a problem. Um, I'm just trying to think, was there anything else I wanted to go over? Um, yeah, so I think that like I've seen multiple times where I've seen quarterbacks play terrible to like week one and they've done just fine i mean i remember back in 2014 romo threw three interceptions he looked completely terrible and people were like well shit this looks like a lost season because your quarterback doesn't look good and they went 12 and 4 um you know every jesus for the last however many years um ever since we've lost the home opener or the, the season opener more specifically, we have gone on to go to the playoffs. I believe Dallas has like a 70-something-odd chance to get to the postseason, which I really don't give a shit about. Because at the end of the day, let's do our job and let's do it right and let's get to 4-1 uh, and one, hopefully. You know, every single week is a step-by-step -step process. You know, as much as we're excited because all the trash talk that's been going on because week six is around the corner with us playing Philadelphia, I really don't give a shit. Let's just see what happens this game. Let's see who's healthy and we'll go from there. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one, okay? Have a good one. Goodbye.